So thank you for hopping on. I made the graphic on Thursday and I totally thought I sent it in the message. And then it just dawned on me this morning. I was like, I don't think I ever sent it. <laughs> I don't know. So thank you for hopping on. I'm glad this worked out. Um, you guys have snow too, Tara? Ugh, so bad. Um, so why I'm thinking of it, I, I did not, so backtrack a little bit. I will get better at posting about the super weekend that Beachbody hosts. So my entire coaching career, I never, I was telling Allison today, ours, um, I never really went to them because they were over, like the closest one was an hour and a half um, away. And then it just, Miami traffic was not fun. So I never went to them, but now that I've been in Michigan, I haven't missed one. Um, they're a quarterly event. So our next one will be kind of an open house style after summit. I think it's July, like 26th through the 28th. Um, this is the first time they've run it this way. So I don't know exactly what to expect. Um, just know that there'll be a, an event in your area. Um, you'll just have to go on the beach body website, the, your coach online office, and you can do the events tab and you can find events near you. Um, Grand Rapids one is always at Frederick Meyer. Um, Jamie Innes and Leslie Cortez put it on and it's, it's great. We had, um, Carl Deichler come today and he spoke and did like a little diamond Q and A after. So sometimes they have like a super trainer come and you can do a workout live with a super trainer. There'll always be a little video. Um, they'll announce some products that are coming dates to mark down. They'll always have like a coach, um, in the video kind of sharing some tips. I have the honor today to share my success story with Beachbody. So you'll hear from coaches in your area and their success. So just a really great way to network with other coaches who may not be on our team, but people that you can, you know, do things with and, and meet. So when you do go to summit and you do go to these events and our team can't go, or you hit a rank and you go to this, you know, a party, that was one thing that it's hindered me by not networking with other beach body coaches. I only have friends with on, with, on Meg's team. Like I have a few on others, but um, if you are a social butterfly and you are totally okay doing something like that, I highly encourage you to check that out in July after summit. Um, I would encourage you if you're not registered for summit that you talk to your spouse, you look up um, the tickets for summit and you know, try and go. It's in the Midwest, which I love. The last last year, it was the first time it was in Indianapolis, and it was so nice because we didn't have the time change. <laughs> Normally, it's like out west, and that's a three-hour time change. Flights are usually very expensive. Um, it's in Indianapolis. It goes from Thursday, July 11, till Sunday, everyone departs um, July 14th. So super fun event. You'll hear from keynote speakers. Rachel Hollis is our keynote speaker this year, which is super exciting. I'm really excited to hear her speak. Um, recognition parties, workshops for where you are at with your business. Again, the first time they've ever done that. Um, so you will go in and you'll learn from other coaches in the network and hear them live and be able to chill with our team. Last year, I think we had like 24 or 20 in between 24 and 30 coaches there, which was really cool. And I think this year we'll have more than that. So just a really fun way to network, get to know people. Meg is doing a diamond dinner Friday night. So if you are diamond by a certain day, I'll get the day for you guys. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but if you're diamond by that certain day, you can come out to dinner um, with Meg and she will, her and Kirk will purchase us dinner. So if diamond is on your board that would be a fun little you know incentive to kind of work the next couple weeks and get to there it's totally doable so anyways with that said um i'm gonna pull up and answer your guys's questions first and then um i'll go into kind of the game plan for the week um structure their week tara asked kind of like that routine um if anyone wants to chime in feel free to just unmute yourself and jump in I have a very unique <laughs> schedule, I guess. Um, Mondays and Fridays, I have a babysitter. So I typically take two days and I do a lot of my networking and adding to my network. And I send a lot more messages on those days. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I just 
stay on top of my messages. I will answer the urgent ones. I will post on social media and I will send out like half of what I do on Monday and Friday. So tomorrow, like I want to message my to do list upstairs. I want to message and invite 10 people to a coaching or to a challenge group. I want to invite five people to coaching tomorrow. So on Tuesday, I would probably cut that in half and try and invite three to five people to a challenge group and do, you know, one to three invites to coaching or get a coaching call, coaching call to action post up. Um, what Meg was talking about on Instagram is adding them. So I kind of do this. Like I just do a really massive ad on Monday and Friday and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm just social because I can be on my phone and mindlessly like and comment um, without feeling like I have to be strict, like, thoughtful in my message. And I think that's the biggest thing is I don't want to just send these willy nilly copy paste messages. I want my messages to come off as, as authentic. So I try to do those in the times that I'm focused. Um, and then, so Meg, you know, add people Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then be social with them Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And that's just on the people that you're adding on Instagram. That doesn't have to be other friends that you're adding on Facebook or anything like that. That was just a way to, um, you know, kind of be organized and not feel like you're doing everything every day as far as scrolling your newsfeed, if that makes sense. Um, but really, what I would encourage you to do is the Success Club System Tracker is printed out. And I had this epiphany today, and so I'm going to talk to my assistant and see if there is a way that we can, like, create a book. Like, I love this, but I hate printing it off and then, like, throwing it away. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like even if, if this was in a spiral brown notebook with, like, because there's a back page, too, with people you talk to. I don't think I've ever printed that out. But there's usually like a line of like just a plain piece of paper with lines on it to write your the names of the people you're inviting. Um, if that was like front to back and in a spiral bound notebook, it would be the most organized thing because you'd have this flip it over and then you have your list of people on the back as you have your today's to do list. So you can kind of see who you need to follow up with right there. Like you have it. So I was thinking today and I should have raised my hand and asked Carl, like, I would love Beachbody to put this in a book, to put this in like a success club system book that coaches can purchase. Like you guys would all purchase that. You know, I would purchase that. It would just be, um, so I don't think it would be expensive to print this out and then have like FedEx or someone spiral bind it because that's what I did with to be mindset they just took the theme out and spiral bound it like or even print 52 of these out or however many we don't have 52 weeks left of the year but print however many out maybe 12 of them so it gets you through 12 weeks and then three hole punch it and put it in like a small little binder and you can write your invites and stuff on the back of this but then the reason I tell you that is when you sit down to work, this should be what you accomplish. And some of this stuff is going to be like throughout the day, like um, updating your Instagram stories and where is it? A social media post. So two of these you're going to do throughout your day. So when you sit down, you should initiate connections and add followers, respond to likes, comments, and views, invite people to a challenge group, a free group whatever, um, and then follow up with people, contribute to your challenge group and recognize achievement, personal development. So like when I say that I sit down to work, it is this, this middle section right here because the other stuff is I'm doing in my day anyway. Like my workout, my personal development and posting on social media, it's work, but it's not the income producing activities, the IPAs. The IPAs, the income producing activities are this section right here. So that is when I say like you should sit down to work or your power hour or your hustle hour or whatever you want to call it, it's this section right here. And so for some of you, it might take 40 minutes. For some of you, it might take an hour and 30 minutes. And that's where we say like, it's all dependent on your goals. 
Because if you only have 20 minutes a day, you can accomplish a lot in 20 minutes. Like you can add people and send some messages. You just might not be able to do the, you know, 20 that someone else did, but you can still do something. Does that make sense? Like there's, I love that they put the times on here to give you kind of a realistic idea. But if, if you can cut those times in half and accomplish something, that's fine. Like the goal is just to, to move it forward. And Rachel Hollis in her um, book the other day said that like her business was slowly going, but it was going. And I think sometimes we get overwhelmed with like not going fast enough or we're not seeing the results we want or we're not doing this. And um, there are going to be seasons. There are going to be, I'm, you know, in a season where I have to maintain. And as soon as autumn is four days a week and I have more time, I'm in a season of hustle for the next four months until our schedule changes again. So this goes, this business can go into the, like that hustle mode, that maintenance mode and slow growth is still growth. The worst thing you can do is do nothing. So, you know, I've, um, does that help? Does that help Tara a little mm -hmm. bit? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you can structure it to make it fit for you. Like I do my workout, I get a post up in the morning. That is just routine for the last six years of my life, like without fail. Um, and then I either work at nap time and I just try and get as much done as I can. Or um, I allow myself until like 8.30 to like clean up the kitchen. And at 8.30, it's work time from 8.30 to usually 9.30 or 10 on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is when I kind of, so that's why it's hard for me to do calls Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because that's when I'm working. Like that's my power hour or my work hour. Um, but with that said, if it would be helpful, I have no problem coming in here and saying, Hey, I'm going to start working at 8:45. If anyone needs some accountability, we can do a zoom and I can say, okay, this is what I'm doing now. And we can kind of work on that together. Like if you guys are open to that, I'm, I'm happy to, Oh, to have that as an option without it being like a scheduled feel like it has to be mandatory. It'll just be like, Hey guys, I'm working. If you want to jump on, let me know. I'll send you a zoom link. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Even during the day I can do that and say, Hey, this is what I'm doing. Like, is, if I'm going to be doing this so I can pull up a screen and do it with you or whatever. So, um, let's see here. Um, I'm going to make sure everyone is okay. Um, free groups. So I haven't done a free group in a while. Um, I usually, my free group is the bumps and beyond group. If you're a part of that, it's my new mom group. Um, so in conversation, I'm typically talking to a toddler mom, a new mom, whatever. And so I invite to that group and it just kind of opens that up for conversation. Um, however, looking at the calendar for the next few weeks and just where my business is at, I think it would be really beneficial for all of us to do a free group of some sort. Um, I think just something simple of, you know, even dinners, I think dinners is like the most common theme of struggle for moms, whether you work or not, like dinners are just hard. Like I get to dinner and I'm like, why do you guys have to eat? Okay. <laughs> why? Why does this have to happen? Um, so I have found like a few things that have worked for our family that I've done blog posts and simple posts about, but I'm kind of mulling this over. But I think a free group would be really beneficial going into like the next few weeks. Um, and as far as duration, Amy, it really doesn't matter. We've done a 10 day free group and I think that's too long. Like the premise behind it was like go a full week and we wanted to have you have them in for a weekend and then like start their week strong, but people just fade it out too fast. Um, I feel like five days is great. I mm -hmm. would say like the five days, it's just weird because I feel like you need people on a, engaged on a weekend to help them like make it through that weekend because weekends are what trip people up and then prep for, you know, Monday um, to get back into that healthy mindset, but starting a healthy clean eating group on Wednesday is like weird. Like, I don't feel like people are as pumped about it. So I feel like seven days would be the, the like sweet spot. Okay. That, that weekend would just be 
I'd give them a five day meal plan because people will have leftovers, people have weekend plans. And then we would be really heavy on like, you know, providing a tip as to how we all stay on track for the weekend. Um, so I feel like seven days would be the best. And it's just like, I don't know, we'd have to like, I feel like we have to come up with like a catchy just so it would stand out. Um, what are your guys' thoughts? Like any ideas that you guys have for a free group or what's worked well for some of you who've done it? Nothing. They wouldn't feel like they rock their dinner plans. Like they're really good at prepping beforehand. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Because we're all home for the most part. Um, two and a half year old and a four year old, and they're constantly just climbing. So preparing dinner the night of is so challenging. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So dinners are a struggle. What are we like overcoming? like mealtime obstacles or something. Like we'll still give them a pretty basic meal plan, a shopping list, have a daily post. But if like, how many of us are on here? Seven, right? <laughs> Doing math. Um, if we all had one tip, that's one tip a day from seven different people, which is a lot of value. And I can always do more. Like I have my, my dinner tip, thing or whatever that has it's like a 10 step planning for dinners um you know I could break that up too um but if we gave them like here's a meal plan here's a check-in post but also each day we're going to tell you how we overcome these types of situations so running late for work or you know rushing out actually like rushing out the door for breakfast with a with a toddler and getting yourself healthy and focused and you know how do you do that um how do you do that as a stay-at-home mom like even a stay-at-home mom do you eat a hot dinner how or hot breakfast like how do you make that happen how do you stop from snacking on your kids plates um how do you prep for dinners for the week i can gladly take that one and go off my blog post um how do you stay on track how do you overcome you know social outings on the weekend or things like that, that we can go live for five to seven minutes each day to give them a tip tool a value and say like, and show our whole, like our whole group that we're not just here to like give you a meal plan and like see on your way. Like we want to help you overcome these obstacles because they're going to be here. Like it doesn't matter what plan you have, the obstacles and social socializations and kids life and sick kids and whatever don't go away but we just need to come up with solutions for those obstacles. Would, how do you, would that be fun to do? Like, we're gonna give yeah. you a real plan, a shopping list and check in, but we're also gonna like give you seven situations to help you overcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I will put that on my to-do list um, and get that going. I was thinking, so it'll, this will be a perfect segue into, um, the calendar. So mm, uh, all, um, they're doing the 21 day fix real time workouts right now. So the next real time workouts will start April 29th with 21 day fix extreme, which before lift four was like my jam. So I'm super pumped because it's, it's such a great program, um, which also works out because we'll be done with lift four. And I will be back from Florida. I have um, my retreat with Meg the 24th through the 27th. So it'll actually work out really nice because I will be away from the kids for four days and be able to actually get good focused work time in um, and then be home Sunday. And so I'm going to, in our Ultimate Portion Fix group, you know, that's still up and running, but we'll kind of have an, a, the next round start that day, April 29th. So you're kind of relaunching, re-promoting Ultimate Portion Fix for that day. 
and we will take clients through 21 day fix extreme is, is what I am going to do. If you've done 21 day fix or lift four, you should be fine with extreme. But if you're bringing in a new client who's just starting out, they're going to want to do the 21 day fix real time. They're not going to want to go right into extreme. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll just have to be in, co in communication with our clients to let them know like, Hey, you might see people doing extreme, like don't do extreme because we don't want you to get hurt. Like we want you to segue into this, but that's where, so right now that's where your focus should be, um, is on ultimate portion fix promoting, like I was thinking about it today. So my thoughts are kind of jumbled, but like doing a change, you know, like I've been doing to be mindset for almost a year. And so I'm going to commit to containers for three weeks. Like it's three weeks. I can do it. It's not going to kill me. I can do this, but you know, owning that program, but also the, you know, you can do to be mindset with 21 day fix extreme, totally fine. But I feel like as a coach and as a, if you're going to do the program, try and do the nutrition program that goes with it. Just try it and see what happens, you know? Um, but that way you give honest feedback. So that would be where I would start that day with us, Tara. Just start the 29th. Um, go through your videos and, and learn that stuff. And um, there, she does a really great job, which I wish Alana would have done this with 2B Mindset. She broke down the videos very well. So there's like a video to watch calendar so that you can kind of stay on track without <laughs> feeling like you have to watch all of them at one time. Um, and, and there are some like, you don't have to watch. Yes, you do. <laughs> like you don't have to watch like the, you know, grocery shopping with your kids or something like that. It's just, there's, there's only, a, I think three modules that I would say absolutely watch. The rest of it is just a lot of good, valuable training to take into your, your, your life, of course, but then also into your challenge group. So try not to get overwhelmed with that too much. Um, but I'm very interested to hear your, when you start this, what you think, like for those of you who have been a hundred percent to be mindset, I, I, I can't, I want to hear what you think. Honestly, my biggest hang up with the portion fixed containers is I don't feel like I get to accessorize my food as much. That's kind of my, my biggest hurdle. Like I, that's, that's my biggest hurdle. And I think I really just need to plan out my containers better. Um, and I don't get as much avocado. I've done the containers since I really took my journey seriously. And even though I like, I've done the 21 day fix, fix extreme up to 80 day and this program it's just like if you follow her on social media it's kind of everything she's ever talked about so a mm -hmm. lot of it was just review for me mm -hmm. um, but yeah it, it is sometimes I do feel restricted in ways because you only get so much and I'm like I want cheese and the seeds and the <laughs> avocado on my salad <laughs> like my salad I'm like I have to choose sunflower seeds or dressing what to be mine is that I have both and a few things of cheese and avocado. So I'm like, um, but I think, but on the flip side of that, like, I think it's important to know that and have an honest opinion of both programs because we do offer them and you're going to, clients are going to see both programs advertised and other people doing it. And so as coaches, the best way to build your credibility is to say, Hey, I've done both. This is what I love about to be mindset. And this is what I love about portion fix. And there is a document in the team page that has five questions to ask clients and based on their answers, giving them the best options for them. Like if someone, you know, needs to know, like I have to have this, this, and this at every meal to be mindset is not going to be for them necessarily because there's, there's guidelines like fiber fill carbs at breakfast and protein, but with portion fix, it can be like, okay, you get one red, one yellow, this is what you have for two mindset. It's like, no, well, maybe I'll have two yellows today. Maybe I'll have two reds, maybe, you know? So, um, it just kind of is a, a little bit more intuitive eating and some people really struggle with that. So, um, I have found that I really like it, but so anyways, that'll be our focus. Ultimate portion fix with 21 day fix extreme. I'm going to say, if you don't want to do that, don't do it. 
run a to be mindset group. That's totally fine. I have been to be mindset for 11 months. Like this will ultimate portion fix was the first nutrition program that I group that I've run, you know? So since that launched, um, with that said, I will have another to be mindset nutrition workshop, May 13. Okay. So if you don't want to participate in the ultimate portion fix, you do not have to, it is not a requirement and you do not have to, you can promote right now the free group and then invite those people to join our May 13 to be mindset group. Okay. Um, Friday, I believe we have a coaching sneak peek with Meg and Abby. Again, we'll do that, that whole thing. Um, so that is available for you guys to invite to. And as new coaches, you guys can invite to that too. You don't have to like wait for a blessing from me or a certain time or anything. Like if you have challengers that you've signed up and they're loving Shakeology or they are, you know, just really supportive of your business and they're rocking their challenge group and you just really see like coaching qualities like I don't ask every challenger to be a coach I ask people that I see something special in or I just know their past or I just have seen their results and they're gonna send referrals like Tara was sending me referrals I'm like Tara just do this <laughs> like you're giving me money that you can be having in your pocket like it's your work it's your journey you are what's inspiring them so same thing <laughs> yeah, like, okay. Um, same thing. Like if you just have, like, if you just get this feeling, don't hesitate to ask them. Almost all of you took some time to say no, or you ignored me. I ignored Meg for two years before I was like, okay, what are you doing? Like, okay, I'll give in. Like what's going on? So you just have to plant that seed, plant that belief in them. And that's your job. And then the rest of it is on them. And they're just going to have more eyes on you. They're going to be a little bit more in tune with what you're doing, how you're speaking, how you're posting. So share it all. Share on your Instagram stories what you're doing, how you're making this a business. We'll take a picture and, you know, put it on your Instagram stories and go all in and own the business. Like this is your business. You are the CEO. You get to build this and you get to choose how that happens. And that's such a cool, beautiful thing. Um, and the more confident you get in the beginning, whether you're faking it till you make it, the, I think the more you build your business and the more you invite. And I was super shy in the, in the very beginning. So feel free to, to invite to the sneak peek. Um, tentatively, I will be sharing my story Tuesday night. And so that's another opportunity that you can invite people to. I will just create an event um, on Facebook and you can invite your people there or tag them when I'm going live and they can hear my story. And um, I'm going to share what I talked about today, kind of more so than anything. Um, but then you can invite them to that, hear my story, but I'll also in that explain how they can get started as a coach. And that's for coaching guests on Tuesday. Yeah. I think I just have to check Matt's calendar to make sure he's home. I get really bad anxiety when he's home and I have to do something at a certain time because if the kids don't go down, I get like all frazzled. And, um, so I think he's home. So I just want to double check on that, but I, it will just be me going live on Facebook, sharing my story. Um, I was sitting there with Allison today and I was like, I'm so nervous. I like, can't even, I can't even take a deep breath because I was so nervous to share my story in public, like on the stage. And she's like, you've done this a hundred times on Facebook. <laughs> like, what's your problem? <laughs> like, it's just different, but we haven't done that in a while. We've kind of gone to these events on Fridays or one day a week with Meg and Abby. And I feel like our team has done really well when we do like a live, just one hour event of just sharing the story. And then in the event, I'll share like the coaching basics um, document that they can have, as well as, you know, the next day I'll maybe have in the event or post about how they can get started. Um, so yeah, so, so there's two coaching opportunities that you can invite to and then April 29, Ultimate Portion Fix and 21 Day Fix Extreme, and To Be Mindset on May 13. So after, just to give you some 
where my thoughts are. Um, Jericho is coming out with a morning meltdown, morning meltdown hundred. I think is the name. It's a weird name. Morning meltdown hundred. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now I think is launching that summit. So we kind of have like this weird break because you don't want to start like an eight week program or 80 day obsession where it's three weeks because you're going to want to do morning meltdown hundred. So I think like May 20, it would be very smart of us as a team to do court of force to get Jericho out there to do her program to get to know her you guys will love her if you've never done court of force or even like she has some exclusives on there I hung out with her I've seen her at leadership and then she was at Meg's house for one super Sunday and she is just a gem like she just has like a heart of gold she's the cutest little thing um so I'm super excited for her workout um but just to have that in the back of your mind, like if you are, cause I think we'll all, that's the first week that we'll be done with fixed extreme. So just kind of have that in the back of your mind that maybe like core to force will tackle the workouts are a little bit longer with 45 minutes. Um, so that's usually like the biggest hurdle, but my thought was it's summertime. I'm not rushing my kids to school at a certain time. So it might be a little bit more doable during that month, or we can come up with a hybrid and just do like the shorter quarter force workouts because there's like 30 to 35 minute ones and work in you know lift four for legs and lifting or something like that so we could totally do a hybrid too i know i know it's so long the workouts are so good though so good yes may 20 would be like the next um like workout that we'll have to kind of decide what we want to do. If we want to do something, I mean, you guys can do whatever you want. I'm just thinking cohesively together if we wanted to do that. Um, so yeah, does that help? Does that give you some direction for the next couple of weeks on where to like put your focus? Oh, free group. We'll have to like do that pretty soon. Like we'll probably start the 22nd because we can talk to those people that week about ultimate portion fix and get them plugged in by the 29th. So April, the day after Easter. So it'll actually work out kind of nice. <laughs> it'll be the free group. So the only thing I will send you guys um, like a sign up sheet or something like what you want to talk about what you want to go live in the free group about for an obstacle to overcome does that make sense okay so I'll do like planning dinners and some dinner tips um, but then if think about what that something I don't want to just assign you guys one because it'll be a lot easier for you to do if you have a certain situation that you're like this is how I do it and if there's repeats, that's totally fine. Because if like if the repeat obstacle is the same, the solution might not be. So that's totally fine. So we'll send a sign out sheet up for that. I will use just a five day meal plan that we've used a hundred times over again. Um, and we'll put together some posts. Um, again, like pulling from things. We'll just, I guess the, the beauty of it is like, we only need seven. You don't need 30 of them. You just need, um, seven tips, seven to 10 posts, um, a meal plan for five. Should we do the whole week? Should we do weekend planning or like maybe just do a seven day plan, but repeat some of the days anyway. You know what I mean? Okay. So we'll do a, we'll do a six day. They can have like a leftover day, six days and then a shopping list. So I'll kind of get all that together for the group and we'll do that on Monday. Does that sound good? Okay, cool. So focus this week, this week is the, the free group invite to that. But you guys, if they're like, yes, I'm in, I told like, I, I need portion. Like if you get in that conversation, you do not have to stop with the invitation for the free group. You can say, Hey, like if you're that ready for something, like, we have two nutrition workshops that we offer. Do you want to hear details or open that up to the invitation of the challenge group right then and there when you're doing the free group. So even if they say no in the beginning, you've already 
put that invitation out there so then when they're going through the free group they know that there is a next group that extends beyond the stuff that they're going to get from this and they might be ready at that you know end of day four being like okay like i'm in i'm ready to do this um, and people will ask also free group with Shakeology. They can purchase a Shakeology sampler if they want, but I don't require it. So that's there. Like if like, do I have to have Shakeology or Shakeology part of it? It's not required for the free group. They are welcome to purchase a sampler. There's a vegan one or a regular one um, that they can purchase and try some flavors. So that is there for them as well. Okay. And I will do... We'll do like three days of prizes and I'll have like I have some bars or daily sunshine or Shakeology that I can, well, just like randomly pick a winner on three check-in days so that people kind of get, oh, oh, gifts, cool. Um, all right, anything else? I just thought of a question. Okay, so invitations to like cold market on Instagram. It totally varies person to person, and I think it's just the, the conversation flow. So I might have one. I start with Instagram because I can't remember. Um, okay, perfect. She just messaged me. Um, I messaged this girl who liked my page, saw you follow, saw you on my follow list. Thank you so much. How do you find my account? Are you following along for overall inspiration or something specific like fitness and motherhood? I also saw that you have tattoos. How many do you have? <laughs> she replied, I just recently started working out. I have three tattoos, chest, wrist, wrist and thigh. I said, that's awesome. I just got my second one. What do you do for workouts? I've been doing the basics, losing back and arm fat, been doing crunches and stuff for my mommy tummy. That's awesome. I don't know if you've seen or if you'd be interested, but I run nutrition and fitness boot camps monthly if you're ever interested. There's the invite. She's already doing something. She's telling me she's working on it. All I'm doing is asking, like, hey, if you're ever like if you're ever interested, I this is what I do. I didn't even put a question. Like, I didn't know you saw, but this is what I do. Her reply, I actually never heard of that. Information, please. And this was yesterday, and she just messaged me again. Whenever you can get to me, it'd be greatly appreciated. <laughs> so, you know, that's literally like exactly how it flows every time. Oh, I'm doing the workouts, or I'm doing this. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I don't know if you've ever heard of or if you've seen me post, but this is what I do. Have you ever thought about doing something at home, or have you ever thought about learning more about proper nutrition? and just looking at really what you offer and what you, you provide for them. Um, you could even just ask her, hey, I've seen you loving my posts and all about health. And, like, I've seen you loving all of my posts. Are you a health coach too? Or are you on a health and fitness journey as well? I'd love to hear about what you're doing. And just, again, like, just opening up that conversation. And I think you think she's going to think that you just want to sell her something. And sometimes that holds us back because we're like, I don't want them to think I'm just going to sell them something. And that happened. I, I mean, I'm still like that too. I'm like, I don't want them to think I'm just trying to befriend them because of that. But if you send that vibe off, that's the vibe they're going to feel, if that makes sense. But if I, like, I, that's pretty, like, that conversation is pretty natural that I just that's how a lot of my conversations go with and and she's honestly one of the first that's ever been like yeah I would love information normally they're like no I'm good thanks and it's like okay well you know if you ever are you know where to find me or I can't wait to follow your journey or keep me updated on how your results are and you know end it positive um but yeah, just asking, hey, you know, thank you so much for following and supporting all my posts. This has been hard to share. So, you know, I really appreciate it. Are you on a health and fitness journey too? I'd love to know what you're doing and support you. And she might come back and say, oh, nothing. And then you say, oh, 
well, have you ever thought about it? Or is it something that you're thinking about starting? Because she's liking it. So it's not like health and fitness is like, ugh, to her. And I always, if not, no worries. I just wanted to ask. Like, no worries if not. No skin in the game. And once you send those first cold, few cold, cold. Actually, Carl said something today, I think, and I liked it. I'm like, your friends and family are your hot market. Like, they're your hot market. We always say they're your warm market. And I think your followers are your warm market because they're seeing you. They're already following you. They're liking your stuff. So there's not like this, oh, I can't believe you messaged me. Like, well, you're liking my social media posts. So I think I have the right to message you. Um, and then your cold people are the ones that you found their page and you're inviting off the bat. And I think that feels like the most awkward because there's no relation, there's nothing there. But if someone's liking and commenting on my health and fitness stuff, or even my business posts, like they're reading it or the picture intrigued them. Um, so that would be something too. And I've done this for coaching. What about, you can ask them in this way, like what about my post resonated with you? Or what about my post made you like it? Or what about my post um, you know, stuck out to you? And it might be that you like there's one thing that stuck out, and that's really helpful for you too as you post on social media that you figure out what stories and what storylines and what words are triggers for people to say, oh my gosh, that's me too. Like no confidence, no self-esteem, didn't know where to start, binge eater, body image issues, you know, eating restrictions and running for hours or like all those types of things start to trigger those emotions in people. So, um, you know, what about my post, my co coach opportunity post stuck out to you? Have you ever thought about doing something like I do? And that's an invitation. Yeah. Sometimes they won't. It's like a weird thing. I mean, some people just are super private. They'll watch, watch, watch. They'll watch you. They'll comment, but they won't ever answer the message or accept your follow. But they're still supporting you. So, you know, just it's not like you, I mean, they're making it impossible for you to support them, but you can, you know, send them a message or like comment if they comment, like, thank you so much for your support. And eventually they'll reach out to you when they're ready. I have a few that are interested in ultimate portion fits, but then decide not to go through with it. Um, to the next one. And you can totally like recognize that. Say, hey, you know, you, I know you were interested in this last month and maybe it just wasn't the right time. I wanted to let you know, you know, we just scheduled our next group is going to be April 29th using this program. If you were, you know, interested, I'd love to help, help you reserve your spot. Again, it's about them. You thought of them. There is not one person that I've ever had be like, I cannot believe you remembered that and you're following up with me. Like, it feels good to have someone be like, hey, you know, I thought about you. I know last month wasn't the greatest timing, but hey, I thought about you for this one and wanted to, um, I, and this is true, before I do a post for this group, I'll go back to all the people for portion fix and say, hey, before I open this up to the public, I wanted to open this up to people who've shown interest before. And then you can, you know, post when you need to, even if it's the day before, like at least you get the invitation out and then they see the, the post the next day. Um, but all about them, all about them. I thought about you. I thought this might be better timing for you. I wanted to make sure you knew um, and follow up with them that way. Yep. And you guys, I have people on my follow up list that I have sent message like every, every month. And after like five or six months, I just stop and I'll go back. Like I, they're still on my follow up list, but it'll be like another three or four months before I mess them again. Cause it's like, well, now you're just being rude to me too. Like you can at least acknowledge me. And then one day like me, they'll come calling back and sign up and be a coach. And <laughs> So, was helpful. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, I want to snapshot these questions, and I will create like maybe a little document with the responses that I said, so we can type them out. You know what I mean? 
and we can see if that'll help. When you write down someone's name on your list. No, not every person I follow, I write down only my invitations. Only people that I've sent an invite to. Mm -hmm. So like I'll, I'll message like 10 new followers tomorrow. I won't write all of them down on my list. I will, I will put some of them in like the collection organization. Like if I'm like, I really like her vibe, I'll put them in a coaching or a challenger collection. Um, but I won't write her name down or until I like extend the invitation. Good deal. Anything else? No? I think we need to do these like once a month. I think this was really helpful. It forces me to get organized too. So, <laughs> but I think it would be good, like, what time, you know, the middle of the month to kind of, hey, this is where your focus should be the next two weeks. This is what, you know, the first week of the month is going to be planned. So, um, I'll make a note on May's calendar to try and get that done. So, um, and last but not least, Allison has gone Emerald. So we want to congratulate her on her new rank that she achieved last Thursday. Um, despite the coach on my office being a jerk, we're all good. So yes, super excited for her. Um, such a cool milestone. So good job. Excited for you. All right, I will have this recording up. That way we can refer back to it if needed. Um, and then I will say May, like a new coach powwow or something so we can kind of reconvene and answer questions and stuff. All right, all right, let's take a picture and then everyone can go to bed. All right, everyone adjust their hair, smile pretty. <laughs> One, two, three. Awesome. All right, girls, have a great night. Thank you for hopping on.